Okay, it's been eight days and I've got the three pound barrels outside and the first thing we need to do is see how to open them. The first time I did this I, I thought I was just going to twist this metal part off and that, that's just not going to work. So you unscrew the plastic one and that shouldn't be all that hard because it, you shouldn't have been cranking it on in the first place. But the key is, and I'll, this is you're not just going to pull this metal thing off. It's, it's on there good now. So what you do is you take the little washer and you kind of jam it in that little seam there and twist it and use it to break the seal. And once you've broken the seal, then this comes right off. And the same thing with this lid, you take your thumbs and you, you break the seal with the rubber barrel. And once you've broken that seal, that comes right out. Okay. Now inside, that's what it looks like now. You got gray mud soup. Um, and the reason we're outside, in any video you look at, they're going to tell you the same thing. You absolutely do not want to dump this stuff down any drain. Inside or out. Um, it will eventually turn into cement inside your pipes and then you're going to have a very expensive problem to deal with. So you don't want to do that. So that's why I'm outside. Um, there's a lot of different ways people try to deal with it. Um, I know uh, Michigan Rocks has a, he dug a hole in his yard and he just pours it down the hole. Um, it's not hazardous waste, it's just basically rock dust and water. Uh, but you don't, you don't want it going down your pipes. So I'm outside and I use a colander. If you, uh, I bought this just for this. You probably don't want to deal with your mom or your wife by using hers. We don't use this one for food. And you see, it just rinse them out pretty good. And with the three pound, there's not enough rocks in there. They rinse off pretty easily. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna clean out the barrel a little bit. And that's why I bought a toilet brush. This is not one that has actually been used on a toilet. And I use it to basically just clean out the inside of the barrel. And the thing is, if you're gonna use these barrels to move on for step two, step three, step four, you really want to clean these well because one of the biggest problems you could have would be cross-contamination. And what that would be is if I let grit and slurry from this first batch carry through into the next batch, it's going to mess it up. So basically you don't want to do that. So you make sure you clean it off really well. That's why I bring, I bring my toilet paper out, or toilet paper, toilet brush out, and I bring a toothbrush out. So stuff like on the edge here that doesn't want to come off real easily, I can use my toothbrush and clean it right up. Now what I'm going to do to keep these two batches separate is I'm going to rinse the rocks off again. Give them one more rinse, rinse that lid off there. Rinse the rocks off a little bit and I'm going to put them back in the barrel. And then I'll deal with what I'm going to do with them when we get back inside. So right now, they're going to go back in the barrel. And I'm going to put a little water in with them. Keep them wet. Got some chips in there. There we go. Now we're going to open up the other barrel. Same process. Take off the bolt, or the nut, whatever you want to call it. Take off the washer. Use it to wedge in there. Break the seal. And metal lid come right off break the seal there this lid will come off and the same thing we got a whole new thing there let's see what these look like and I'm dripping on my other barrel that I just cleaned off with the lid that's great so rinse that off Carnelian's got a little more color to it. Got some, got some orange in there.
and same deal as before. I'm going to clean off the barrel, clean out the barrel, and then when I got the barrels clean, then I'll go back inside and we'll start setting these ones back up for the next step. But I also, I have my 12 pound barrel in there, so I may just take these inside and bring the 12 pound out and we'll deal with that so I can deal with them all at the same time. Okay. Um, I also noticed um, this rim right here. I forgot to clean it on the other barrel, so I'm going to have to deal with that. Probably going to take these and put them back in this barrel. this barrel off better. I use the toothbrush usually to clean that. Now here's the thing. I'm putting step one back into these barrels. So I'm not going to have cross-contamination so I'm not real worried about that. And to be honest with you I'll probably talk about this more inside. I've not had a lot of problems with that, um, but there are things you can do to work to prevent it and might be smart, but basically um, I don't have to worry too much with these barrels because I just took step one out and I'm going to put step one right back in. So if any of the grit or slurry carries through, it's not going to hurt anything. Probably won't help, but wouldn't hurt anything. Um, all right, I'm going to go in, grab the other barrel, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back, and the 12 pound barrel is the same thing, just on a bigger scale. Same deal, I open it up by using the washer to break the seal, and then the lid comes right off. Break this seal. This lid comes right out. There you go. <clears throat> and I have a lot more of that slurry, but it's it's about the same, it's about the same consistency. Looks like a gray pudding, kind of. Well, maybe not as thick as pudding, but not very appetizing looking. <clears throat> and I want to clean this out and I'm in the same boat with this one as I am with the other ones that I'm, I'm not I'm I'm doing step one only in my rotary so this is going to be it's coming out of step one and I'm going to put more step one in it so I don't have to be real real careful um, it's not going to cross contaminate uh, now when I get to the lotto I do have to kind of keep an eye on it because I do do steps two, two, three, and four in the lotto. And when I'm moving from two to three and three to four, it could cause me a problem if I if I let slurry sneak through. All right, now the next thing with the 12 pound, if I dump all the rocks into my colander at the same time, the ones on the bottom don't tend to get cleaned off real well. There's just too many. So I usually dump about half, rinse them off, and then dump the rest. And we'll see how that goes. Okay. And this is my favorite part when you hit them with the water and the colors come out. Um, start seeing what you got. That's to me, that's the fun part. Alright, 
We'll add these in. There we go. That's a lot of rocks. And same deal. I, I am going to be doing step one in this again, so I don't have to worry about cleaning it perfectly, perfectly, but I am going to clean it, um, and especially around that rim, because I don't want the, I don't want the grit wearing out the rim of my barrel. I think I mentioned in one of my videos, I do have a brand new 12 pound barrel, but I figure I'm, I'm not going to start using it until I have to. I have it as I have it as a backup when this one looks like it's about to fail or if it actually fails then I'll move on and start using the new one this is the fun part about this um, this is not a hobby for the, the impatient as you figure I put these in here eight days ago and this is the first thing I've done so yeah today I'm gonna spend probably a half hour 45 minutes between emptying the barrels out cleaning off all the rocks and getting them getting them all set up again and I'm not gonna touch them again for another eight days so it's kind of a you know small periods of intense activity followed by long periods of waiting so this is not a hobby for the impatient. All right, I'm gonna move inside now. So we will meet up again inside when we're looking at the rocks. Okay, here we are inside. I've got the first batch of smoky quartz in the sink, um, rinsed off. And now the idea is I go through and I do this more with my hands than with my eyes. I feel the rocks to see if there's any rough spots, if there's any cracks, pits. Um, you can see they're rounded a lot more than they were when I put them in. Let me see if I can get that to focus up close. Yeah, there we go. Uh, I figured out last week, here was the problem. I had my face in the picture. The camera's going to try to focus on my eyes. So getting it to focus on something other can be tough. Um, but right now with my face out of the picture, it looks like it's focusing pretty well. Um, but basically this one's not ready, so it's going to go back. Like I said, I doubt any of this is ready to move on to step two. Okay, so I'm just basically feeling the rocks, seeing if there's you know anything. And if I find any that are completely smooth, everything's right, everything's ready, then I'll put them in a different container and I'll keep them separate. The other thing is, in the course of making these round, okay, I have, they're smaller. There's not as much rock, and you could see. Um, I'll show. I'll, I'll go through all the smoky quartz, and you'll see. I had that. I had the barrel probably over three quarters full, and now I'd say it's it's over half, but not a lot over half. Um, so I've lost some volume there. So now I'm going to have to put something else in with it to kind of fill the barrel up. So, like I said before, now this week when I start it up again, I'm going to have all this smoky quartz that has already done one week in step one. And I'm going to put some stuff in that has not done any time in step one. And basically, it's, it's a process. When I have enough to fill a barrel for step two, then I would move on to step two. Now, for me, when I do that, it's to fill the uh, lotto barrel. But basically, for a rotary, if I were going to do this all in the rotary, I would be waiting until I had enough to completely fill one of these barrels um, with rocks that are done in step one, that are completely smooth, no pits, no, no cracks, um, and then you can move them on and do step two. Now, the thing is, step one, it's, it's variable. Step, step one's the, the meat and potatoes of rock tumbling. There's no, you know... Like I said, I, I, I bet last week that this would none of these would be done in a week, and I'm standing with that. There's this one's pretty close. I'm gonna say this one will be done next week, but um, you know none of these are done yet, and it could be you know this week I have none. Next week I might have two or three rocks, 
week after that I might have a bunch. You know, considering this is all smoky quartz, it's probably going to wear at about the same rate. So it wouldn't surprise me if it all took a, about the same amount of time. Okay, once I have enough ready to move on to step two, then um, I could fill a barrel and do a step two, or I could put them into, into the lotto and go from there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and look at these. This is uh, Carnelian. This stuff, it's got a lot of pits in it. So a lot of this stuff, it's going to take me quite a while to wear it down. Um, this one's pretty. Well, they're all pretty, but um, this is a piece of uh, fancy jasper, and that's pretty cool. It, uh, it's got some really neat colors to it. Jasper tumbles, tumbles really well. I, I, I really like tumbling jasper. It rounds pretty quickly. It doesn't take forever to get through step one. And, and that's the thing. People, you know, everybody's looking for a faster way to do step one. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know. I guess, I guess if you bought a, uh, you know, if you bought a uh, grinding wheel, you know, and you, you did it that way, I, I, I don't know. Even then, when I take a Dremel and I fix a spot on a rock, I still run it through step one again to smooth it out, to cover the damage I did. I'm not very good with a Dremel, so it doesn't seem to be my forte. I had some petrified wood in with the uh, carnelian. It seems to have gone pretty well. It might get done faster than the uh, carnelian. Well, that seems like maybe... Next week, I'm going to save most of this jasper and this pet wood might be ready to go on. So next week I'll probably have some ready to go on. Now the the 12 pound barrel, I might have a, a fair amount ready in it because um, I put a bunch in that had already spent time in in step one. But I did figure out, and if anybody's watched my videos closely, um, the uh, rocks that I put back in the 12 pound. I said it was the rocks that I took out at the end of last year. It wasn't. I found that batch. So the rocks I put back in, I have no idea when I put those into the uh, <laughs> into the tumbler. So who knows how old these rocks are. Um, well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and go through them and see, uh, see what I got. And I might... There was some stuff I really wanted to finish at the end of last year. So I might put that batch back in and then fill it up with some out of this batch that catch my eye or anything like that. Like this is a piece of uh, flint that looks pretty neat. So I might might do that. This is a really neat looker. This one might be ready to go on already. Um, this one, this is probably a good example. I'm not feeling any rough spots. I'm not feeling any cracks, any holes. So this is one I can probably go to step two, and it, it's ready to move on. So here's what, since we got that, here's how I do that. I got a little tote. I put some water in it. And anything I think is ready to go to step two, it goes in this tote. And anything I think needs to go back in step one, goes back into the 12-pound barrel. And that's pretty much how I do it. Uh, one more thing I want to talk about, but then I'm going to cut this off. I doubt anybody wants to watch me go through rocks for 20 minutes. Okay, but here's the thing. You may have noticed that on my smaller barrels, I had some writing. I've got this one says rough. This one says fine. Step one's rough. Step two's fine. Step three is pre-polished. Step four is polished. And when I, when I only had the double three-pound uh, tumbler, I actually bought two more barrels and I would literally do that for cross-contamination. I only did rough in step step one in the rough barrel, step two in the fine barrel, step three in the pre-polished barrel, and step four in the polished barrel. And the, the pre-polished barrel and polished barrel are still over there. Um, now, once I got the lotto, I didn't buy three barrels for it. I used the same barrel for fine, pre-polish, and polish. And to this point, I've not had a problem with cross-contamination, okay? Um, I do. I am very careful when I clean the barrel out. Um, 
I've learned to look up under the rim because that's where you want to miss okay but for the most part I've not had a problem there are some people they will do uh, what's called a burnishing stage they finish a stage they clean the rocks off they put either soap or borax in the barrel run it and you'll hear anything from a whole day to a couple of hours okay then clean it and then empty it out and one of the things I can tell you that is an eye-opener you think you got those rocks perfectly clean you think you got everything perfectly clean you put some soap in there run it for an hour and then pour that water out and it's not clean yeah you know, it, it does get more off I don't tend to do it I haven't done a burnishing uh, stage in quite a while um, but I haven't had any yeah you know, if I if I started get all my rocks start coming out cloudy and not shiny I might be oh okay I might have a problem here but for the most part I've been getting good results so I'm just sticking with it um, but I will say this it seems to me like the the vibratory tumbler is easier when I was doing the rotary, that's when I would do a burnishing stage. It seemed, it, and and other people may disagree with me. I think it might be more important with a rotary, especially if you're using the same barrel. So a you know, and when I did it, I only ran it for like like an hour or two hours. Basically, I would start up, go upstairs, and then when I thought about it again, I'd come down and change it. You know, I didn't do it for a whole day or anything like that. Um, but what I'll do now is I'm going to shut the camera off. And I'll come back when I've got everything cleaned off and I know what I'm gonna, how I'm going to move on. Okay, I'm back. Um, I have put the rocks from the last batch from last year in the 12-pound. And I've already put the water in. I haven't put the grit yet in. It actually almost was full, full already. So I put a couple of rocks from that batch I just finished in there. Um, the two 3-pound barrels are still... If you look, they're only full to about there. This one's only only full to about half. So I've got some green jasper that I'm going to throw in. Now I'm doing that on purpose because it looks nothing like anything that's in there already. So next week when I open this up, we'll see all the green rocks after one week of step one. And everything else will be after two weeks of step one. Let me see if i got enough of this. There we go. I think that's enough for that one. And let me see if this, how this does in this one. Um, that's probably all right. I got a little more of the, the pet, petrified wood over here. I'll throw some of that in too. I'd say that's good. Okay. Now I need to... This one probably needs a little more water. I'd say I'm good on that. So now I'm going to put in my grit, just like last week. <clears throat> so one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm going to call it, I'm going to say ten is good enough on that. Okay, uh, before I go ahead and seal these barrels up and get them moving again, um, I did hold a couple of rocks out. I wanted to show, show something. Okay, first thing is, some of these rocks, when they come out of step one, you, you might think, wow, they're shiny already. I'm done. Okay, they... When they're wet, yeah, they'll look shiny, okay? But if you let them dry off, this is what happens right here. Okay, it looks like that's focusing pretty good. So, yeah, that's not shiny. Now, if I wet it... Ooh, check that out. It's all shiny now. So, you know, the key is it's they're, they're not... They look shiny after step one. They're not, okay? So this one's going back in. Um, 
Now, this is, I, I brought this piece out. This is a piece of Mexican lace agate. This stuff is really hard. And this one is probably just about ready to move on to step two. There's only a couple little minor spots on it. But I'm telling you, this one probably did 10, 12 weeks in step one. And it was probably a fair amount larger when I started. Okay, so there, you know, that's, that's something on that. Now this one, this is a piece of uh, flint and it's pretty much almost ready. This is one that some people might say, dude, you're an idiot. Just go ahead and move it on. But there's still a little bit of a, of a crack right here that I want to wear off. So I'm going to throw it back in step one and let it go from there. All right, so I'm going to seal up these barrels. Um, I can, may as well get a little water here. I'll seal up these barrels, take them over, put them on the tumbler, and I'll bring it back so we can watch setting up the uh, the lotto. This will be my first lotto uh, lotto batch of the year. You know, I said last week I don't know if it helps at all, but I wet the edge of the lid before I put it on. Sometimes I, I do this. Um, one thing, it's just something I thought I should mention. Um, I try to get the water roughly room temperature when I put it in, in the barrel. I don't, I don't want it hot and I don't want it cold. Because if it's hot, when it cools down to room temperature, it's going to create a suction, and which is going to put pressure on my barrel that I don't need. And if it's cold, when it comes up to room temperature, it's going to expand, which is also pressure I don't need on my barrel. So um, I try to keep it pretty close to room temperature. Um, you know, I don't think a few degrees is going to make a difference. I do not. I do have a thermometer behind me. It's a little over 60 in my basement right now. Um, I did not measure the water to, to find out what temperature the water is or anything like that. But I, I made it a conscious effort not to use hot water and not to use cold water because I don't want any extra pressure on my barrels. Okay, and it's the same deal with the smaller barrels. Yeah, my, my standard operating procedure, put this lid in, you know, may dry off the top a little bit. Oops, this, this lid's got water in it. Okay, put the lid on. Put the washer on. Tighten the nut down. down a little bit tighten a little more and good to go and, and the key you don't want to you don't want to crank down that nut because it, it doesn't need it needs to be snug not really extremely tight because you can actually ruin your lid that way and depending on the barrel that could be pretty expensive these these little three pound barrels are, are pretty reasonable but that doesn't mean I want to ruin one just for fun you know something like that lid on washer tighten it down push down tighten a little more good to go um, and I do kind of dry the barrels off a little bit because I don't want them to slide on the on the rails all right I'm gonna move the camera over and we'll start these up Okay, here's the lotto, and here are the rocks that I pulled out from step one and I think are ready to move on to step two. Now, what I did, I filled, I filled the lotto, and this time I actually did cold water, and there's a reason I did that. <clears throat> this one doesn't do a seal like the other ones, so the temperature of the water really doesn't matter too much, other than what's going to happen is at the end here, I'm going to drain this water off and I want the rocks to stay wet. So I'm not going to use hot water because then it could have... Okay, my camera just stopped and it yelled at me and told me that my cart has a slow write speed. So in any case, I'm not going to use hot water because I don't want the 
the I don't want these rocks to dry off and they probably wouldn't because it won't take me long after I, I drain the water off to get them set to go but basically there I've put all the rocks in oops I missed one there we go and <clears throat> now I'm going to add ceramic media and I'm going to start with I have some new big ceramic media and I like to start it on step two to wear those edges off so I'm going to put I'm going to put a couple handfuls of that in. There we go. And then I have a container <clears throat> full of big and small ceramic media that I was using from last year. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretty much fill this up with this ceramic media. And I'm putting, obviously I'm putting a lot of it in. I'm going to say at the end, I'm going to be about 50-50 rock to ceramic media. And the thing is, this is this has been working for me. So I'm liking it and I'm going to stick with it. Okay, that looks about good. Now if you're watching, you can probably see, let me see if I can get you a little closer. Um, there we go. If you're watching, there's more than filled. It's clear up into my little funnel. But then you just take it and you shake it down and it goes right down in. So there we go. So it is pretty full. It's pretty full. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a strainer. You can do this with your hand, but with the small uh, media, I'm going to widen this out again. With the small media, sometimes it comes out. So I'm going to use this. It's a small strainer. I'm going to put it over the mouth of the barrel and I'm going to turn it upside down and let all the water come out. Okay, so the water's coming out, but the rocks will still be wet. So when I take them over there, I don't want standing water in this one. Okay, with a vibratory tumbler, it's different. You don't want standing water, but you want the, everything in it to be wet. <clears throat> okay. Now I'm going to take it over and I'll move the camera so you can see what we do over there. Okay, real quickly, um, all the barrels are where they're going to go. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the 12, turn on the 3, and create some background noise to make it harder to hear me. That makes sense, right? Um, but those are now going. Okay, and I'm going to move the camera over. I'm going to take the risk of making somebody seasick. I want to get a good view of this. Um, this to me is, is one of my favorite parts watching the, the vibratory when it goes to work. It doesn't work the same as the rotary. When you turn it on, everything in just starts to move like that. Now, I had a comment recently. I'm gonna turn it off a second. I had a comment recently about how far in to push that barrel, and I never really thought about it. And the person said that people, there are people that have shoved this barrel all the way down till the bottom touches and I mean honestly I, I think it would be hard to do that I just kind of push it in until it's nice and snug and it's not moving okay <clears throat> now for fine I'm going to put two tablespoons on 120 220 grit so it's a different grit this is the fine okay and I usually do it while it's running Kind of, so I'll turn it back on. Okay, I usually do it while it's running to kind of move the grit, and this is why I want the rocks wet because that way the grit will stick to them. We don't want the grit sitting on the bottom. <clears throat> so I just let it run a little bit, pour a little grit in, and run a little bit, pour a little grit in, kind of spread that out through the rocks. Now what happens is over the next three days, this grit will wear at these rocks, it'll create rock dust, and there's not a lot of liquid in there already, so the rock dust will kind of gum it up and it'll get, it'll get thicker and the rocks won't move as well, so at that point you have to add water. So this actually is a little more hands-on than the rotary, because you do have to come and check it, 
but if you put too much water in, it'll wash all the grit off and the grit will all sit on the bottom. And you don't want that either, okay? So I use a squirt bottle because it lets me put in a little bit of water at a time. That way I can kind of, what I'll do is I'll come down and I'll, I'll put in a few squirts and I'll watch it for a little bit and then a few more and get it to where I want it and then I'll let it go. But that's what you do with the, uh, with the vibratory. So now uh, it'll probably be nine days before I, before I do another video. I'll probably just let the rotaries go nine days because I'll do three days with the lotto and fine, three days in pre-polish and then three days in polish and I'll be done. And I know there are people who do less, there's probably people who do more, but that's what I've been doing and it's been working for me so I'm, I'm, for the time being I'm going to stick with it. Alright, so thanks for watching, happy tumbling, see you in the next video. One last thing I thought of before I go. Um, I had mentioned that I quit tumbling at the, in the fall last year because I live in Ohio and I don't like going outside in the crazy weather here. Uh, to give you an idea, today when I was outside it was close to 60 degrees. Today's Friday, March 11th. Tonight at about 10 o'clock it's supposed to start snowing and I'm supposed to have about 7 inches of snow tomorrow morning. So 60 degrees today outside in a, in a shirt, no problem, felt great and tomorrow I'll be out snow blowing my driveway. So basically that's part of why I, I gave it up for the winter. And even in March, Ohio's crazy and that's the way the weather is. So have a good one. I'll see you in about nine days.